Hello, my name is Robert Hubden. The title of this talk is The Mesoscale Order of Nacreous Pearls. Pearls are renowned and coveted for their beauty. It's a beauty that arises from the diffracting iridescence of periodically stacked tablets known as nacre. The goal of today's talk is to discuss the remarkable periodic symmetry that defines the structure of nacreous pearls. Pearls are formed either through an artificial bead or naturally through damage to the mantle tissue of the animal. In either case, a pearl sac forms and begins to grow pearl material around the foreign, foreign object. Here we're looking at an optical image of an organically seeded pearl, and a cross-section image taken shows the organic center surrounded by the inorganic material. If we look at the interface between this organic core and the outer inorganic material, we can gain insight to the mechanisms of formation in pearls. The formation of pearls begins with an aggregation of nanoparticles that accumulate with higher density ultimately leading to a continuous bulk material. This bulk calcium carbonate is in the aragonite polymorph and it has intermittent organic material within it. It's not until a continuous organic sheath forms that we see the first nacre layers. Here we can see the earliest nacre layers on the far right image. These nacre tablets are forming within interlamellar organic sheaths that act as the main patterning agent between layers. After many layers have formed, what we achieve, what the pearl achieves, is long range periodicity of the nacre tablets. Or that is the question we're asking in this, is what is the structure and nature of this long range periodicity at the mesoscale? Periodic structure in nature is rare. If we consider all the length scales of our universe, at the largest length scales, the arrangement of stars and galaxies have no long range coherence, and we don't see translational symmetry of a periodic structure. On the length scale of kilometers, mountains and clouds have characteristic dimensions in their structure, but again, no periodicity. Trees and grass have seemingly random structures, but some minerals do show visible signs that nature might host structure with discrete translational symmetry. For example, the facets of the salt rock are not machined into cubes. Rather, the faceting is a manifestation of a much smaller length scale where crystals are common in nature. It's at the atomic length scale where we quite commonly find long-range periodicity. Aristotle was wrong. The structure of matter is discrete. It's made of atoms that are often ordered. This is an atomic resolution image of silicon we acquired in a scanning transmission electron microscope. What we see clearly are lattice vectors that describe the translational symmetry of the system. One lattice vector takes us to an equivalent unit cell, which we can repeat again with the second unit vector, and again, again, we can do this 100 times, 1,000 times, and in atomic crystals, even a million times. But this is a special length scale, because it's only at this length scale where the building blocks, the units, are made identically. Here, each atom is exactly the same as the others. And because of that exact sameness, we can construct periodic atomic lattices that are truly crystalline, have true long-range order. So why does periodic order feel so common to us at larger length scales? It's because we do experience periodic order at the meso and the macro scale. However, it's a signature of human design. This is a picture of La Plata in Argentina. It's a city with periodic order from end to end. And it's made by design with careful measurement and templating. Here's trees, olive trees. But the order is an immediate clue that they were not planted naturally, rather by human design. The image is striking and unnatural. Our buildings, the tiles, the bricks have translational symmetry, but again, this is by careful design, measurement, and planning. Even at the nano or the meso scale, we see periodic order. This is a modern processor, and we see transistors and memory modules that have periodic order at the nano and the micro scale. However, without templates and careful measurement, creating discrete translational symmetry is difficult, and it's why it's so rarely seen in nature. The artist George Mendez Blake illustrated a basic principle of structure in mesoscale periodicity and grown nanocrystalline materials when he placed a single book, a defect, into a brick wall. This book displaced every subsequent brick layer. Blake's work demonstrates the principle of paracrystallinity. Disorder from any one defect site propagates through the layers of the material. In the context of brick laying, it takes skills, skilled masons to overcome the difficulty of propagating disorder. So mar marked guideposts and lacing cords are used to align and prevent the disorder from propagating into subsequent brick layers. And only with great calculated effort can a 10-story building ensure the same number of aligned brick layers on all sides. 
So it's discrete translational symmetry that defines crystalline order. For crystalline order, we have a unit cell that's connected to an adjacent unit cell by a lattice vector. And the next nearest neighbor is connected by the same lattice vector. And we can indefinitely describe the positions of any two unit cells through an integer multiple of these lattice vectors. But it's not to say that we can't have displacements. Each unit cell could have some level of disorder where the positions are shifted, but they shift around some mean value such that the unit, the lattice vectors still describe the position of any given unit cell. And the disorder between any two positions in our crystal is uniformly described by the same standard deviation. That is, if we have a, a lattice site, or in this case, a particle, and we want to know the probability of finding the position of any other particle or any other unit cell, then we simply need to look at the distribution, the standard deviation of the displacements of any lattice site. That is, between two adjacent unit cells, the, the disorder will be described by sigma, or n number of unit cells will be described by the same sigma. The disorder is uniform. This is unlike paracrystallinity, where disorder propagates from one lattice site to the next. So if one lattice site is displaced, it will shift all the subsequent lattice sites. So if we look at the distribution of lattice site centers relative to a starting point, we get what's called a paracorrelation function. That's shown here on the bottom. So the likelihood that we know the position of the next nearest unit cell is given by sigma. But the next next nearest unit cell becomes broader by root 2 sigma. And in fact, as we continue along, these probabilities in the paracorrelation function continue to broaden out by square root n times sigma. And eventually, there's no longer a relationship between one starting point and another. This is known as the correlation length. It describes the distance of long range order in a, in a, in a crystalline material. So, do pearls have translational symmetry? If we look at a high resolution image taken across the entire pearl, so this is a radius of around 1.5 millimeters, and it's hard to see here, but we actually resolve the tablets across the entire pearl, and I'm showing segments here in the bottom left from an early region, a mid region, and a late region. But actually, they're all really happening quite early on in the pearl. The early nacre is very disordered. It has an interface that wanders with a surface normal that varies around 30 degrees, given in the Fourier transform. mid nacre which is only 50 microns away from the start of nacre, the broadening is reduced down to 12 degree fluctuations of the interface normal, and the, the tablets start to become much more periodic. By 100 microns, again in comparison to a 1 millimeter, 2 millimeter radius, um, this is a very, very short distance. The nacre tablets become very smooth, very flat, with 9 degree surface normal fluctuations, and the Fourier transform shows sharp peaks suggesting strong periodicity of the system. The paracorrelation functions that describes the, the disorder in the system as a function of unit cells to its next nearest neighbor, its next next nearest neighbor, and so on, gives us a sense of how long ranged our periodic order is. In the early, mid, and late nacre, we see many peaks, suggesting that there's periodic order that extends several, several tablets. The late nacre, the peaks are very sharp, but in all three cases, we see that the peaks are broadening, suggesting that there is propagating disorder in the system. If we look at late nacre, the system is remarkably periodic over a very large distance. I would call this medium range order, and it lasts around 14, 16 tablets. That is, after several microns, we can relate one tablet, we can predict its position relative to another tablet. This is incredible given that the fact that the mollusk has no templating, no pre-constructed design uh, or pre-measured design. If we look at how the standard deviations in the paracorrelation function uh, broaden, we can get a sense of whether the system is paracrystalline in nature or crystalline in nature. And what we find is it's somewhere in between. They're not broadening as quickly as this square root n behavior we expect for a paracrystal, but the distribution is not uniform like crystalline order. So there is some countervailing mechanism, some self-correcting mechanism at play that's, that's causing additional order 
and, and, and pushing the paracrystallinity down towards the crystalline-like behavior. If we look at correlations between adjacent layers, we find that, in fact, they do anti-correlate. That is, when one layer tends to be thick, the other layer tends to be thin. And this self-correcting mechanism is at play during the synthesis of these nacre layers. And if we look at the fluctuations across the entirety of the pearl, we can find that the fluctuations are happening across various length scales. A Fourier transform of the fluctuations in the tablet thickness can tell us about the stochastic mechanisms happening within nacre formation. What we find is that the fluctuations in tablet thickness are not random. That is, if they were random in the Fourier transform, the spectral density would follow a 1 over f squared behavior. But rather in this system, over a wide range of frequencies, it follows 1 over f to the 1.5, suggesting that there's correlated linked, linked behavior of stochastic processes in the system. While we're a bit agnostic to the specifics of those st stochastic processes, it's consistent with what we expect from the self-correcting behavior we observed earlier. So I'd like to conclude here, acknowledge the collaborators on this project, as well as highlight Laura Otter and Jisook Kim, who really championed this project. And with that, I'll conclude. Thank you very much for this opportunity.